Every year, AAA companies and indie devs try to serenade us with their new game releases, hoping that it will be the next big success. And each year we get some really awesome titles, but we also get a lot of shit, and a lot of the time it's from those AAA companies. You play these games and just have to wonder sometimes what the hell they were even thinking. Help! Me. I could make a better game than that is something we've all uttered, but in actuality we're stupid and could never. But sometimes, there's someone who actually can and does so. Bright Memory Infinite is an indie game created by Zhang Shan Cheng, or the easier to pronounce FYQD. It's a super fast paced action FPS with a variety of melee skills mixed in. Essentially think of if Titanfall and Devil May Cry had a baby. Be a strange looking baby, but I'd still love it. At first glance you might think there's no way this was made by just one person, and yeah that's obviously true. There was outsourcing done for things like voice acting and music, and the game was marketed and published through the company Playism, but the rest was almost exclusively done by Zhang. What made this possible was the choice of game engine, Unreal. A lot of game engines require super complicated code, especially for things like 3D. However, Unreal has a system called Blueprint Visual Scripting that provides the ability for designers to use virtually the full range of concepts and tools generally only available to programmers. This makes for a much simpler use and easier barrier to entry. Other engines like Unity have this feature as well, but it wasn't added until August of 2020, which was too far along in Infinite's development cycle. That along with all the high fidelity assets in the UE marketplace and you can make a game that appears just as good as a AAA title. And he didn't even stop there, he even put ray tracing in the game which adds some really nice reflections and detail. Of course you still gotta be fucking smart to make all of this work together and Zhang has shown that, but it's even more impressive that he's only 24 years old. Bright Memory Infinite is actually the second game that FYQD has put out, the first being Bright Memory that came out in March of last year. That was aimed to be a brief demo of the game, lasting only about an hour with the full release in Infinite coming in 2021. Infinite is in no way like the first part. If anything, it seems more like an enhanced and expanded remake. Most of the things that you find in the first part are nowhere in this recent release. I'm not exactly sure why Zhang went about changing the identity of the game, but he did have some comments about Infinite's release. For Bright Memory Infinite, I wanted to focus on adding content to give players a more satisfying experience. As a result, development took three times as long as Bright Memory. This process allowed me to learn how to create a strong game while dealing with time and financial constraints. I spent a lot of time thinking of ways to maximize whatever technology and resources were available to me in order to deliver an unforgettable experience through the game. As such, Bright Memory Infinite represents the culmination of FYQD Studios' growth. Now let's get into the actual game. The story? Uh... I, I think I kind of understood it. We play as the very tastefully designed Shelly Atan who works for some organization called the SRO. She gets a call from her boss talking about some unusual weather that's been occurring. Like, this, this guy never seen rain before? Apparently though, it could lead to a global catastrophe or something, and the fact that another group called the SAI is also being deployed further enhances its importance. We get in some futuristic plane oh, thing, activate so the warp drive, propel into airspace. Guess we never got our pilot's license because we crash and oh, that's a fucking black hole. Our goal is to figure out what caused the black hole while fighting through members of the SAI and ancient Chinese warriors? Did I? Did I? Did I read that right? Yep, oh, yep, that's right. Apparently some emperor is casting a primordial flood over the earth and when it's finished, the new world will be born. I guess the flood is something you can control because it just manifests itself as a ball with an hourglass and this dude wants it. But we kill shit, foil the plan, he butterfingers the ball and instead I guess a crater was made and that's it. That, that's the story. Yep. That's all of it. But honestly, I could care less what the story was about because the gameplay makes up for it. I said earlier that the game was like if Titanfall and Devil May Cry had a baby, but how? First off, gunplay is a pretty big part of the game and we get a decent variety of weapons to work with. An assault rifle, a shotgun, an automatic pistol, and a sniper. Each gun can also equip special ammo like tracer rounds or incendiary. The gunplay itself feels a lot like Titanfall and even has the same futuristic look. Then you add that you can wall run, double jump, slide, and dash dodge, and now you got yourself a tried and true combat system. Then there's the hack and slash part. In addition to our guns, we're equipped with an exo arm and light blade, each with their own abilities. Just like in DMC, these weapons allow us to both pull enemies towards us and knock them up in order to perform mid-air combos. They can be further upgraded by finding reliquaries around levels. Charge my arm to shoot a fireball? Fuck yeah! Throw a spinning sword projectile at people? Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah! And additionally, our sword can be used to block and parry enemy attacks and bullets. Here's just a little sequence of what you can expect in Bright Memory.
That gameplay alone is the reason I bought the game. It's super fast paced and we constantly have enemies coming after us. This fast paced nature allows for some super cool combinations to be used between the range and melee attacks. And that's further enhanced from the AI, which is programmed really well. They'll actually shoot at you and attack you. Crazy concept, right? At higher difficulties, you'll definitely see yourself dying a few times, but even after you die, you're put right back into the action and it's honestly so addicting. There was a solid amount of variety and enemy variants and the boss fights were real surprising. Even though there weren't many, they all felt very thought out and had unique designs and movesets. However, <laughs> As you play the game, you start to notice some of the issues with having only one developer. Some of the stuff just felt like it was put in there just for the sake of doing so. It didn't add to the experience. Shit, we gotta have a stealth mission. All, all, all games have stealth missions. Gotta put in some QTEs, right? Everyone loves those. And how could we forget about the airdrop Tesla with missiles? It's a staple in any game. The game can be very mishmashed at points and you end up just scratching your head. Picking up things like ammo was a minor thing that I wasn't a fan of. You can't really run past and pick up loot because your XO arm is bound to the same button. I found myself more times just gravity blasting the ammo rather than picking it up. I also wish that there was more freedom to climb up walls or wall run. The game is extremely linear, so only specific walls could be scaled and only specific walls could be ran on. The environment does look super cool, but I'll be honest, sometimes there's just way too many particles and effects on the screen and it makes it hard to even tell what the heck's going on. The UI is a bit jank and upgrade descriptions are a bit unclear. The controls can feel a bit clunky at times, there's a few technical issues and the occasional frame drop, but nothing major and overall the game does run really well. The biggest thing though is the game's playtime. The entire story will take you only about two hours to complete. That being said, I would much rather have an experience like this where I enjoy a majority of those two hours rather than a 50 plus hour game where I'm spent mindlessly exploring and performing menial tasks. And because I enjoyed my time so much, I'm going to play through it a few more times, trying out new builds and attempting some cool combos. And maybe using some new skins. This isn't the first time a single person has developed a game, nor is it the best, but I think it's the closest example to a AAA title in terms of graphics and gameplay. Despite being a short experience, I'm immensely impressed with the quality of the product. I'm also impressed by the amount of tools that are actually available to you. I know nothing about development, but it really seems that Unreal and their blueprint visual scripting system makes it much easier for solo devs to get into the space, which is awesome to see. Regardless if Zhang continues with the Bright Memory franchise or moves on to something different, I think we'll be seeing him work on many titles for years to come. Bright Memory Infinite can be picked up for $20 USD and is available on Windows, Xbox, iOS, and Android. Let me know if you've played the game and what you think about it, and maybe some of your other favorite titles from one dev. My pick, it's a bit obvious, but I gotta go with Undertale. Toby Fox is an absolute legend. And as always, I have to give a shout out to everyone who supported me on Patreon, especially these wonderful people. That's all I have for you. I hope to see you here next time.